Hey guys, welcome to Action Reaction. So make sure to subscribe and like to my channel. Tons of content here in my channel. TV show trailers, YouTube videos, movie trailers, game trailers, try not to laugh challenges, gaming compilation videos, regular uploads. You can even ask me for what to make. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Definitely subscribe and stick to my channel. You'll see a lot of content. So let's get to the reactions. Let's go. Frieza, the Dread Emperor from Dragon Ball, and Megatron, the Decepticon Commander from Transformers. When these two dictators collide, the cosmos will tremble. He's with a boomstick. And it's our job to analyze the weapons. We have to find out who will win. A death ball. Deep in the bowels of outer space lies a monster so cruel, so callous, so evil that the universe itself trembles at his approach. Behold the mighty Lord Frieza. Oh, he's adorable with the horns and that fluffy tail and the. The other side? Oh, awesome! And he's laughing! Cool. <laughs> Frieza's diminutive stature and faux gentility were intentionally deceptive and rooted in a surprising place. In response to the Japanese economic bubble at the time, Frieza's design was meant to evoke real estate speculators. <laughs> manga cut Akira Toriyama has described such speculators as the worst sort of people. Yes, real people. I guess you could say Frieza is more than meets the eye. Oh, wait, shit, that's later. Yeah. Much is unknown about Frieza's alien race and heritage, only that he and his father were born as mutants with abnormally high power levels. But like how the duck said, my blood alcohol level was 0.8 straight out of food. Frieza was so crazy strong that unlike most Dragon Ball characters, who transform to get stronger. Frieza transforms to get weaker, so he doesn't like accidentally nuke a planet, only intentionally. With his father's empire and army at his beck and call, Frieza would cross the universe, conquering worlds one by one and selling them to the highest bidder, just like real estate speculators. And if anyone objected, he'd just kill them, their entire family, and everyone they ever knew, just like real estate speculators. Well, he usually lets his weird multi Colored alien birds <laughs> do his dirty work for him. Frieza's not afraid to throw down himself, especially if some spiky haired space monkeys start getting too uppity for their own good. Frieza's strength comes from his innate understanding and manipulation of his own key, life energy, which he can use to enhance his physicality or manifest into projectile attacks. Like his classic death beam, death wall, death wave, death cannon, death saucer, death here. Frieza can move mountains with his mind, fire laser beams from his eyes. Key force fields, and he even learned to sense the key of others through sheer observation alone. He's fast enough to keep up with Goku's key attacks, which, scaled to the key he absorbed for a spirit bomb against Kid Buu, could move across the universe in less than a minute. That would be over 17 quadrillion times the speed of light, and he's gotten even stronger and faster since then. You know you're a badass when you can stroll into Planet Vegeta, a planet filled with people whose only higher aspirations involve murder and hair gel. And duck shit like you own the place. And he got so paranoid about one of them getting strong enough to kick his ass that he blew up the friggin' planet. Considering planet Vegeta has 10 times the gravity of Earth, this would mean it likely has 10 times the mass and 100 times the energy required to overcome its gravitational binding energy and destroy it. That's over 5.3 Yoda tons of TNT. And that was in his weakest form. Too many kind of business fun. Or several because a bunch of Saiyans survived to fight another day. Space Genocide just ain't what it used to be. This would come back to bite him when he was finally forced to confront the Earthbound Saiyan Kakarot. And actually ended up being the reason he turned into the legendary Super Saiyan. Like the Albino Dildo he is, Frieza has survived being pounded by Broly for over an hour straight, crushed by Goku's spirit bubble, and then split in half, consumed by an exploding planet, and left to float in the vacuum of space. He can survive without the vast majority of his body, though unlike like other Dragon Ball villains, he can't heal on his own. It didn't help him that much after he got his ass sent to hell, but because of that dragon in his balls, he was back at it again. And with just four months worth of training, the first time he ever trained in his entire life, Frieza was able to achieve a new transformation capable of surpassing the Super Saiyan, Golden Frieza. 
That's a level of laziness I aspire to. This is me and our freezer here. Let's keep up with Super Saiyan Blue Goku and Vegeta. A significantly weaker Super Saiyan God Goku could blow up the whole of Universe 7 in a punch black, the God of Destruction Beerus. And the shockwaves of their punches were able to reach the edges of existence in only a few seconds. Over 270 quadrillion times the speed of light. And that is before so many years of power ups and training between then and now. Totally crazy, but nothing compared to his newest and greatest form. A transformation capable of surpassing Goku's Ultra Instinct and Vegeta's Ultra Ego. Their peaks at this point. A transformation even stronger than Gas, who was wished to be the strongest in the universe. He literally said F you to the Dragon Ball. This is Black Frieza. The all seeing Oracle Fish had prophesied the coming of the universe's strongest. And perhaps he was talking about Frieza. What? Come on, give us another prediction. Oh, Wiz, I think you're gonna die. Though, for some godforsaken reason, he didn't use his newfound power to kill them, as he said. They were right there, you moron. In fact, he once committed the arch-villain's greatest sin and teamed up with them to save their universe in the Jirith, being comparable to the gods of destruction. Because no one's allowed to destroy the universe but him. That's a promise he means to keep. This almighty emperor will continue to rule the universe with an iron grip and a heart of ice. You either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become a villain. Or you live even longer and become an 80s toy commercial. This is Megatron. And Cybertron's ancient past, the planet was ruled by the Hutchinist religious force, which decreed that Transformers now were born alternate mode to turn their goals to high school side out rather than letting them be themselves. Born into this prison cast system, Megatron of Tars dreamed of something. So this giant Hasbro toy robot from D599 at your nearest grade 8 wrote a manifesto on peaceful descent that got popular with the oppressed Cybertronian working class. So much so, in fact, that the Senate tried to have him assassinated. Whoa! Politics alert! After surviving that rush with death, Megatron was convinced that peace could never be an option. The only path left to overthrow the Kremlin social order was violent revolution. So were the Autobots originally the bad guys here? Optimus Prime? More like Optimus Crime. Never say that Megatron wasn't committed. The Civil War he started between the two groups lasted 9 million years. And again, remember, Toy Robot. He was aided in his war efforts by his immensely powerful fusion cannon, a giant laser bazooka that can hit targets from 12 miles away and level a small town in a single shot. These projectiles are so fast, they're able to exit the atmosphere from ground level at the a single second. By scaling the distance of the Earth on the angle of the shot, the fusion cannon's projectile must be moving over 4200 times the speed of sound. But, like me, the fusion cannon needs a little time to recharge between shots, so Megatron's got some tools to keep the job going. He can close the distance with his Energon mace and block flows with his Energon shield. It helps that Meg's literally fought as a gladiator before it's done as a revolutionary. Megatron can fire lasers from his eyes and arms, launch pulses, strong enough to slice through solid rock, fly through the air, and open up a force field known as a panic bubble. Now it might seem like a huge flaw that it lets enemy combatants inside, but that's only until you realize it won't let them back out again. That's when the panic part comes in. Megatron's not trapped in there with you. You're trapped in there with him. Megatron's cybertronian body is strong enough to match the Autobot leader Optimus Prime, who can toss around oil tankers weighing hundreds of thousands of tons. And Megatron's metallic hide was tough enough to survive an explosion so massive, it washed the entire planet of Cybertron through space. By taking a look at Cybertron's mass and how fast it was sent flying to get its overall kinetic energy, Megatron must have survived a blast equal to nearly 4.5 Nina tons of TNT, enough to annihilate a small star. He can even keep up with Decepticons like Starscream, who can fly across the galaxy from Earth to Cybertron at hundreds of thousands of times the speed of light. And he wouldn't be a Transformer without being able to transform into vehicles, vehicles, a tank, a stealth bomber, jet, and a gun! Just a gun! Counter B-38 specs! I'm sorry, 
I know he's this tragic revolutionary corrupted by the cycle of violence or whatever, but that is the funniest shit I have ever seen. What is the outlaws? Deceptifuddies point out people and fire? Sometimes. He can fire himself. Oh my god. That looks even sillier. You may be laughing, but Megatron is no joke. By utilizing space bridge teleportation technology, Megatron can establish a remote link up to a nearby black hole and teleport the yeah, antimatter it produces to his location. Through his eyeballs! Sure, matter and antimatter meet, they will be mutually annihilated. In a brilliant release of energy defined by E equals MC squared, it doesn't matter how durable the matter is, it will be destroyed at the subatomic level. As Megatron, more the control of Cybertron dragged on, all of his highfalutin ideals started to fall to the wayside. In essence, there used to be a point to the war. Now, war was the point. His only goal left was to rule Cybertron with a literal iron fist. That's where Megatron's greatest weapon came into play, his mind. The dude is a strategic and technical genius who's always thinking ten steps ahead. He's fought powerful Transformers like Grimlock and Renegade and the Decepticons, a being with the power of an entire evil universe behind him. He and Optimus have even fought Nova Prime and Regenesis Shockwave, both of whom could utilize the energy of that same universe. Megatron once sealed himself inside an Omniglow and commanded a thousand real-life battles at once, funneling every iota of relevant information into his brain at the same time. The sheer deluge of data would be incomprehensible for anyone without that supercomputer brain. But all that robot ass kicking ended up as a drum, and the only true loser was Cybertron. With the planet in ruins and its civilization extinguished, the Cybertronian golden age was long over, and the vanguard of its destruction was Megatron. Who's now a crusty Saturday morning cartoon villain with a voice that sounds like he smokes 40 packs a day and a hate boner for his boneheaded second in command. Starscream. They still have countless millennia of unstable because Boy Scout rival Megatron's brilliant mind finally turned inward. He remembered that his early writings advocated for peaceful conversion and free thought instead of domination. It took you nine million years to remember why you started fighting in the first place with the memory. Get lost in the cloud. In what was possibly his most surprising tactical move yet, Megatron saves the universe from annihilation as an Autobot. What? He realized that after millions of years of indefinite war, the ideals that he fought for, freedom, justice, equality, had switched sides, and Megatron had to as well. Turns out there was more to this supervillain than met the eye, because true to his nature, Megatron transformed. Greetings, noble warrior of planet Cyber Whatever. I, Lord Windsor, claim this world as my own. Cheer for me or I fought for my planet for eons. I would rather see it turn to ash than reside in your filthy hands, organic scum. <laughs> I love it.
did he go? Go This just always happens. I give it three, please, five minutes. <laughs> Behold the mighty Lord Science, ruler of a dying planet. My planet. Where is your army? Where is your ship? So powerful, and yet you will wander the depths of space for eternity, all because of me! What a fool! You despicable, treacherous worm! I'll torture you until your screams can be heard in the vacuum of space! Idiot, Megatron's ruthless resilience to the death and win and suck the larynx. Frieza's overwhelming power gave him a clear end. Megatron's ace in the hole was his antimatter, which would have annihilated Frieza's ass no matter how tough it was. And that was a real possibility. Megatron is a master tactician and manipulator with millions of years of combat experience. Frieza, on the other hand, has always relied on his raw power oh, and yeah. intimidation well, to win just fights. When things don't go his way, he has a tendency to freak out. However, Frieza has survived getting most of his body obliterated and kept going. Which meant the antimatter wasn't a surefire win. It would have to completely cover Frieza's whole body before he could react. And Frieza was way too fast for that. While Megatron scaled the characters who could cross galaxies, Frieza has kept up with Goku, who should be at least trillions of times faster. And on his smaller size and key force fields, Frieza had more than enough ways to avoid, defend, or survive the antimatter. So Megatron's only option was power. While Megatron has survived planet busting okay. explosions and even fought with a being that had the That's energy right. of a universe behind it, yeah, Golden Frieza was just yeah. too much yeah. for him, yeah. considering he certainly yeah. surpassed Goku and Beerus in punch class. Yeah. Since Universe 7 as a whole should be over 13 times larger than our own universe, Frieza's super forms would far exceed Megatron's own power. And that beat happened at the beginning of Dragon Ball Super. Goku has gotten leagues stronger since then, and Black Frieza is currently beyond him. There was just no way Megatron was strong enough to keep up. Megatron was a devious foe, but Frieza's power, speed, and sheer survivability allowed him to crush the Decepticon leader underfoot. I guess you could say Megatron was cool, but Frieza was cooler. The winner is Frieza. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. Hey, are you a Death Battle member? We've got a ballot going on right now where members get to choose a matchup for the next season. So click that join button and jump into our champion's Discord. Go, Joe. What's next time? Oh, shit. Chase on, man. Oh, my God. Oh, my God.